Hi everyone. So I wanted to continue the series on getting healthy. So I've listed topics and in the end I think I have found over 50 of the most common topics that I see people come into the hospital or into my family practice office with. So the first one I want to start with today was high blood pressure or hypertension. This is by far I guess one of the most common things that I see in the office and in the ER department uh, and people are on so many medications for it. So first thing is I wanted you to know that the recent guidelines tell us that your home blood pressure measurement is actually the best measurement to use. Many people know for years that you've heard the term white coat hypertension. So that means when you go to the doctor's office that your blood pressure goes up. So now when they've reviewed the guidelines, so having a home monitor is even better because it truly tells how you're doing. Or if you don't have a home monitor, it, though they're easy to buy, they're like under $100, you can buy them at Shoppers Drug Mart, at Costco, anywhere, you can be booked for a 24-hour blood pressure monitor that's done through the hospital. And the ideal blood pressure that you're looking for is around 120 over 80. So if you're hovering above 140 over 90, that's generally when we're gonna start to some, inform you that you need some kind of treatment. But your goal is to have it around 120 over 80. So that's the number that we're looking for. So I wanted to talk about one myth that's associated a little bit with blood pressure because so many people say to me, well, I don't eat salt. <laughs> so less than a third of the population are actually salt sensitive, okay? So this is not an excuse. And really, unless you are eating tons of processed food, uh, you're probably not gonna go over your daily salt limit. But what really influences blood pressure much more is a high sugar diet. And I have seen this again and again. You know that I run programs for weight loss and ketogenic diet, and even just when people go off bread and sugar, and I've seen within two and three weeks, people coming off of blood pressure medications when they reduce sugar and they get rid of gluten. So that's pretty impressive stats that you can see. So what's going on? So why is sugar the problem? So sugar kind of goes along with people that have a high level of insulin in their bodies. When we have a high level of insulin, uh, our body will actually retain fluid. We go into a state of inflammation and we are going to retain and often that will raise our blood pressure if we have excess fluid on board. Also, our blood vessels get inflamed, they get sore, they get sticky when we have high amounts of sugar in our system. So if we reduce that, then we can reduce our blood pressure. So what other things can you do to reduce your blood pressure? So one would be along the lines of trying to reduce insulin resistance, so that's intermittent fasting. So we know that every time you eat, your blood sugar is gonna spike. When it does, your insulin level spikes. And insulin is a problem, okay? It's a problem for many reasons, but it's a problem for blood pressure. So trying to schedule your meals within an eight to 10 hour window can be very blood beneficial for reducing your blood pressure. Don't eat before you go to bed. Intermittent fasting, some people even take this further to go to a six hour window to eat their meals. But just a simple thing I tell patients is don't eat before you go to bed. Make your last meal at six or seven o'clock and that can help you to lower your blood pressure naturally is what we're talking about here. So cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone, and I can't kind of talk about this enough. You know, before when I was studying, you know, as a student, I used to think, well, cortisol, it's stress, it's all in your head. But the impacts that stress has on the rest of the body are so clearly seen. So you need to reduce cortisol, so you need to reduce stress. So how do you get stress? Well, there's mental stress, there's worrying all the time. There is physical stress by being overweight. There's physical stress by not sleeping well. So I see a lot of times that insomnia can actually cause high blood pressure. Sleep apnea, so if you're snoring a lot at night and you don't sleep well, sleep apnea untreated is a risk factor for high blood pressure. So think about that, what is causing stress in your body? So how can you reduce stress? Going for nice long walks, you know, meditation, uh, deep breaths, watching your heart rate through heart rate variability, all of those things can be beneficial in helping you to reduce stress and then to lower your blood pressure. Um, we know that other things can help lower blood pressure naturally. So beet juice, beet juice, yes, I'm talking about the juice from a beet. You can buy it in a jar, or if you have um, a juicer that you can actually 
uh, make juice, your own ju beet juice. It can actually lower your blood pressure by four to five points. That's drinking a cup of beet juice a day. And the reason for that is that beet juice actually contains natural nitrates. So many people have heard of nitroglycerin. You know, that's the stuff people spray under their tongue when they get a, a chest pain. Or some people wear a nitro patch when they've had angina before. It's opening the blood vessels around their heart when they're tight and beet juice can do that natural same thing. Okay, so think about that one. Um, the other thing is low levels of vitamin D. Now, many of us live here, you know, in northern, um, you know, we're in North, North America, we're in northern Canada. We don't get enough sunlight throughout the year. So many people need to have a vitamin D3 supplement because we really just can't get it from the sun. So if you're kind of talking to your doctor and you have high blood pressure and you want to really screen yourself, we'll say, doc, do I have a low vitamin D3 level? You can actually get your blood tested for that. And you want your vitamin D3 level to get up toward 100. So most of Canada needs at least 1,000 units of vitamin D3. That's recommended. But if you have high blood pressure, you want to get your level checked. Um, the other thing that we think about for uh, blood pressure is actually magnesium. So magnesium is a vitamin and mineral that we get from nuts and seeds, primarily from leafy greens. And you know, many people don't eat enough of that. And also, um, I find that a lot of our nutrition now in the ground, the soil's been overused, so we're actually not getting enough minerals from the soil that we need. So supplementing with magnesium. Um, 150 to 300 milligrams at night. You can talk to your doctor about the variety that you want. Many people choose magnesium citrate. It acts as a little bit of a laxative. Um, magnesium glycinate's another form and that can help you to sleep. But magnesium is another supplement that you can think of, of, of starting if you have high blood pressure. Um, and so these are kind of some basic tips on what you can do to reduce your blood pressure. Now, high blood pressure. I have a little question here online. I can't open it right now. But I went through the top reasons for blood pressure, the numbers that you want to have, and some of the basic things that you can do. So think about it. You know, if you're out there, you're on medications, what is the root cause for blood pressure? There are few people that actually have a genetic predisposition. And I do see this people in their 30s and 40s. But the majority of time, blood pressure can be treated through lifestyle methods. So think about this, try some of these out and get healthy. Have a great day.